sitting here in uh, Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> and I get a big kick out of it because the uh, uh, weather people were talking about a cold front moving through and thunderstorms, which we did have. But they were talking about how cold it was going to be. The high was only going to be like 54 today. <laughs> They're like, wow, man, that that still seems pretty nice to me. But uh, anyway, this I'm I'm here to geek out on this video. So this isn't the normal RV video. Uh, although I will, there will be a picture appearing of where we are. <laughs> I'll just throw it in after I'm done with the video. But. Uh, most people that rely on the internet that are digital nomads, and that's a growing number of people, you know, even young people that can work on the road are doing that in some cases. So uh, connectivity is always, uh, you know, a challenge in that uh, you need good, good internet. So many of us, if not most of us, invest in uh, at least two carriers and depending on when you subscribe if you're lucky you've got an unlimited plan that you don't have to worry about but uh, you know you get throttled or cut back uh, on speed and a lot of times uh, one provider or the other in an area will throttle more than the other one does or isn't available sometimes you can get Verizon like if you're out west Verizon is uh, you know pretty pretty common but if you're back east not always uh, then AT&T is more prevalent but the throughput varies a lot on on both of them so sometimes even though you've got your preferred vendor it's uh, you know not the best of service but anyway you know those are just some of the things that you run into but the problem is is that these devices uh, that you use, I think they call them MiFi's, but the little the little hotspots, uh, they they work great. But if you're like us, as an example, we have connected uh, at all times uh, two phones, two Apple TVs. Each of us have our own. <laughs> Uh, two iPads and then my computer so what is that two four six that's seven devices that are always connected to the internet so if you're having to switch between providers and you've got all these devices connected everything gets disconnected and jumbled and some things don't come back on right and I mean it's just a pain in the butt sometimes when you have to switch between one MiFi device and another one so I had always had it in my mind that I would set up some type of router that perhaps that could either happen automatically or would uh, at least let me change the settings without disconnecting everybody and it turned out that I could do that through my Mac and and the reason that it's easy to do on a, like a, a Mac or a or a Unix machine is that they are, the networking stuff is designed and built into them so like in the old days and you know by old I mean five or six years ago um, we would take old PCs and I would install uh, FreeBSD which is my favorite brand of Unix I would throw FreeBSD on and we'd use these things as a million different types of servers uh, but typically we would use them as routers and do they could do NAT and DHCP and DHCP is what hands out your addresses to you when you connect to a little wireless network like you normally do at home and then you know and then it would route out to the internet over an Ethernet port so Long story short, I've had it in the back of my mind that I could use a Raspberry Pi to do the same thing. And a Raspberry Pi is a tiny little all-in-one computer that, very inexpensive, you know, 40, 50 bucks. I paid, I think, 70 because I wanted to get a power supply and a case to put it in. And this, this 
is what a Raspberry Pi looks like. And that's with the case. So, and I don't know if you can see the power supply back there, but it's just a little tiny brick type power supply. So, this thing has a bunch of uh, USB interfaces on it and then an Ethernet port. So I hooked my Mac up so that it's hooked up via Ethernet and then I've got my Verizon at the moment, MiFi device hooked in there. Um, I think they call it a jetpack actually. I'm probably misusing the terminology. So that's my Verizon jetpack. So right now I'm getting my internet over the Verizon connection. So all my devices are hooked up and functioning and because I set this up to be a, a router I have it where I bridge the wireless interface on it and the Ethernet interface so that it hands out and I set up DHCP on it and routing so it hands out addresses to all the devices in my house and then routes them out the internet connection and it took a little bit of setup and playing around and trying different things but it's so satisfying when something works the way you the way you had it planned so basically at this point i can take in this this device here so get a picture I'll probably dig out pictures on the internet. But this is my uh, AT&T hotspot. So let's say that uh, we get somewhere though and I discover I can't use Verizon. So I want to be able to switch easily to my other device. So what I can do, I could leave it plugged in all the time, but I'm just going to disconnect this it has four USB interfaces on there, so it, it could handle leaving them both plugged in and then turning them off and then the other one on, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to plug in my AT&T device now, and we'll give it a second to uh, stabilize. And then uh, I'm going to turn that off. So now what's going to happen is that if I did my job properly, uh, everything should switch over automatically to the new backbone without having to change anything in the house. Uh, um, let me move this terminal window over here. And... I'm going to uh, use my little SSH program to get directly into the Raspberry Pi. So um, I'll SSH as that user. And then just for the fun of it, I will ping my server. And if the new AT&T hotspot activated automatically, we should get pings back from my server and lo and behold we do so now let's go to our speed test wipe out that result and let's rerun it and this time it should run through the uh, it should run AT&T internet now okay so you can see that it says it's on AT&T. So let's see what kind of speed we get with AT&T. What surprises me is that Verizon quite often is faster, but it seems like I get better, you know, better service out of AT&T most of the time. Like I get less throttling uh, or less, uh, uh, network management or whatever my speed it doesn't seem to drop on AT&T as much when Terry and I are both streaming <laughs> it, you know it may just be my impression on there but anyway uh, there you go I didn't have to change a single thing 
other than swap out which hotspot is plugged into my Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is a full-fledged computer. It, it, it can do about anything that you would do with a computer. It's got a, a little uh, X Windows, which is the Unix version of Windows, you know, so it's got a graphical interface. Uh, it's got programming languages that come already installed on it but you can add whatever you want because it's a Linux operating system so things like a web server uh, MySQL PHP all that kind of stuff you can do whatever you want with it I mean it's it's pretty sophisticated little little tiny computer is what it amounts to you know all in one so it's got all the interfaces and uh, it's got HDMI out so you can hook a monitor to it and uh, just a fantastic little device for 40 bucks you know crazy crazy device so in the end here's what I did I set up a Raspberry Pi I set up interfaces to do DHCP so it's handing out addresses to me and then I set it up to act as a router out to the internet on the interface that shows up when you plug in either uh, Verizon or an AT&T hotspot and they, they use different interfaces, but it, it works regardless. Um, the AT&T is a USB device. The uh, Verizon one shows up as, a, as another Ethernet port. But anyway, long story short, for well under $100, because I spent more than I needed to, uh, but when you, you know, I got the device, I got the case, I got a power supply, and I got it at Best Buy. I didn't order it on Amazon. Had I ordered it on Amazon, it would have been even, even less expensive. And, you know, some configuration work and experimentation and stuff I'd forgotten about and haven't done in, you know, in years. But it was great. It was great to get it up and working. It's so satisfying. But I think that, you know, you can buy specialized stuff cellular modem routers that will will uh, keep keep connected to multiple providers and that type of thing but you know you're talking five or six hundred dollars for some of those things and I'm not sure that they're that much more reliable and easy to work with compared to this Raspberry Pi that you know I can SSH into it from my Mac so uh, in the end, you know, it's a it's a pretty fantastic way to do this. And uh, uh, hopefully, if you're a, a digital nomad and need need to stay connected to multiple providers, and you're tired of having all your devices drop off every time you switch providers, etc., um, this this will solve that solve that problem for you. Maybe make life just a little easier and things a little more reliable. Anyway. Thanks for watching.